what's going on everybody today we're going to be working on this 2001 chevy silverado so i haven't really talked about this truck uh, i ended up getting this not too long ago and today the alternator went out so since this thing went out, I wanted to take the opportunity to show you guys how we check this and and how we're replacing it. This is a really easy replacement and to check it, it's also really easy. So uh, if you have a, a voltmeter or like me, I got this power probe, uh, hook up your power probe and you should have voltage on this thing from over here from your battery power over to this little like jun junction block. Okay, my battery's almost dead, but I think I, I got like, I got 11 and a half volts there. And then you should have voltage right up here at the back of the alternator too, at the same 11 and a half. So as long as you have voltage from, uh, from the battery over here to the back of the alternator, you should be good because there's no, there's no fuse. I think uh, between here, there should be like a fusible link somewhere. And uh, as far as like this connector here, the PCM controls uh, the alternator. So there would be, I guess, worst case scenario if, if you hooked everything up and the alternator still wasn't charging, you'd have a more serious problem with the ECU. But uh, yeah, as long as you got power right here at the back, you're gonna be good. So next, we're gonna have to take this thing off real quick. To start, we're gonna have to take off this uh, part of the part of the air intake. Now that we got this thing off, now we can get to the tensioner, which is right here. Loosen the tension, that we can get the belt off of the pulley or on the alternator. If you got the tool to remove the belts, um, that'll work. But being that there's quite a bit of space right here to get to the tensioner, you can just use a wrench, which is what I'm gonna use. So any, any wrench will work. It is a 15 millimeter. It just press this down and then get the belt off easy peasy so next things we can do um, you see here we got the only thing that holds this in place is these two 15 millimeter bolts uh, this one and this one you got your connector here that get off real easy and then right here you got your uh, 10 millimeter bolt. It looks like a 10 that uh, goes to the back. That's the, the power supply. What you would probably want to do next uh, is uh, disconnect the battery just so you don't short anything out and then take this off. That's probably what I would do next. Now that we got the battery disconnected, let's take this uh, this bolt out, and that one's just a pin. Let's put that one off to the side. I mean, you could just put this back in there like that and leave the battery connected. It's not gonna affect anything, but. Just for safety, you know, short anything out, just disconnect the battery. So now, let's grab another 15, get those, those two bolts out. One, 
Mm-hmm. Okay, now that we got those bolts out, everything is just connected. We just uh, gotta get something in here to pry this out. There we go, that easy. So now the next thing we gotta do is get the other alternator. And I didn't know which one I needed. Uh, there's 105 amp and 130 amp. And I looked it up and the only thing I can tell is uh, that the casing looks a little different. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I do know that the belt size changes uh, depending on if you have the 105 or the 130, but I decided I was going to take it off and then take it in and figure out which one it is exactly that I have. It looks to be the 105 amp, but I just want to make sure you guys can maybe hear that now. I didn't hear any, any noises at all when it went out, but so no signs of it wanting to go out. It was just from one day to the next. But anyways, let's go get the other one. Alright All right, everybody, so here got the alternator now and uh, we just gotta install it. But one quick thing that I wanted to talk about is when you go to install these, pretty much on any car, either it has it on like this truck, it has it on this bracket, but uh, other cars might have it on the alternator, like on these spots. It's gonna have these little like sleeves. And when you go to put it back on, it's not gonna want to uh, go in very easily. You gotta push them away from the alternator. That way it has more space to fit in here. So what I do usually, if I got space, I'll get like a an extension and uh, hit these, like so these need to come out this way, so I'll get an extension and hit it that way, or like with this I get this little hammer, and I can just tap it, a couple times and you can see how that one is now compared to that one. So now there's going to be plenty of space to put the alternator in. Let's do this one real quick. slide in like so otherwise it's gonna be super tight to try and get it in so now I'm gonna see how fast I can put this in but you know it's gonna be reverse order of everything just wait till the very end to connect your battery
it was running a little weird right now when uh, when I started it, but uh, could have been because that battery was really, really low, I think, I hope. Um, so, now we're going to use this little, this cheap little uh, bolt meter that I got from Harbor Freight. I think I used it the last time I changed the alternator on that Tundra. Yeah, so now we're going to check voltage at the at the battery and see what it's running at. There you go guys, 13 and, 13 and some change, like 13, 8, which is pretty good. Now you can hear that the idle is doing a lot better. Maybe it was just the battery being so low. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And hopefully this encourages you guys to want to work on your own vehicles. So until next time, peace.